Hello, this is Christian Figueroa, a PhD student at the University of Leeds in the Institute for Transport Studies, and I will show you my presentation entitled The Pride Built Environments in Santiago de Chile, Narrative Social Capital and Liberty Standards as Key Aspects of Urban Regeneration. In the structure of the presentation, I will show you the background, some general ideas about the literature, the approach related with the method, the context, and then the results which are related with the narratives and the built environment, how the built environment is interpreted, and some final remarks about how the, build, the regeneration programs can be improved. About the background, from different points of view, a vast body of literature have studied the built environment. It is often described as any urban intervention which confines the public realm. This includes from tangible aspects like sidewalks to abstract metrics like density. Studies related to the built environment with public activities or what happened in the public realm normally trace directly from them. The behaviors depend on how the built environment is arranged. What happens with this traditional approach? These studies often neglect the dynamics of the public realm. The public realm evolves over time and is transformed by the experience of those who occupy it. The idea of these parties try to recuperate uh, the approach developed by James Jacobs, Jan Gale during the 60s, who said that there is a dynamic relationship between the physical environment and what happens in the public realm and the activity that what happens uh, that happens there. So you have a dynamic circles in which those activities influence the built environment and the built environment itself influence then the activities again. Those who inhabit the built environment in this case uh, give meanings and signify the futures of it. The built environment in this is interpret and its structure allows the performance of certain activities and hinder others. So the relationship between both is bidirectional and is dynamic. So in this setting, I would like to ask uh, uh, to the research, how does the built environment can be improved? What issues or obstacles can facilitate or hinder those improvements? So this is the context, this is Santiago de Chile, this is the urban area, this is the largest city of the country, almost seven times the size of the second largest. The core city has 6.5 million inhabitants and is normally classified as a high income city. Usually it's described as a city with only one center that you can see in darker grey in the center of the figure, which consists in the, in the historical center and its financial expansion to the east. Due to aggressive public policies, the city almost eradicated irregular settlements during the decades of the 90s. Everyone counts with a house and basic services like drinkable water, sanitation and electricity. However, the provision of housing to everyone had a high cost. Public policies pushed the most private group towards the periphery due to land prices, far from the available services and the opportunities of the cities. This created deprived neighborhoods controlled by urban violence drug trafficking and dominate by a high sense of distrust towards the institution and a general feeling of having less options and opportunities than the rest of the society. So this created also a quite different patterns in which the highest densities of the city are located in the periphery and also in which the poorest people are located also in the periphery starting from 15 kilometers away from the historical center which is the main a place of uh, facilities, services, and job sources. And this also is create a, a strange model sharing which the people living in the periphery depend more on non-motorized transport than the people who live in the center. They tend to walk more and to cycling, to use bicycles to, to satisfy everyday need. In these settings, the public space look like this. This is a block apartment, but you can see it's deteriorated it has some sign of vandalism and is almost empty without people. So in this setting, I asked to the different individuals and I, and I did several interviews to them because they perform the public activities and they interpret and occupy the built environment. What happened with this, they have a position towards the white society, they feel stigmatized by the rest of the society, they feel affected by the public sector and its policies. They often have harsh life stories in which they move from one deprived neighborhood to another and they normally reflect, reflect from that point of view. And they also feel that the community, the good community, exists only in the past. The 
current community is always fragmented, is dominated by individualist, individualism and things and similar things. And also they also show a high sense of normalized aggressive activities like drug trafficking. They are considered as normal aspect of everyday life. So in this place, I ask, I have two data collections. The first one was related with walking interviews in which I interviewed 32 participants. They were invited to walk in the place where they live and answer several, several questions related to their experience when walking and performing activities. This was accompanied by observation, mapping and photographic record. With this first data collection, data collection also interviews with the same participants of the first data collection and also interviews with uh, with the participant I did 41 interviews and with policymaker I did 24 uh, interviews of the central metropolitan and the local state. With this I identify several aspects of the built environment that has, that appears as relevant for the people performing activities in the public realm. Three of them were dynamic, they change over time and have clear agency according to the participant. Meanwhile, the Ford, which is the urban form, is static and does not have a clear agency. The state, which has been reducing its size, was less mentioned and was considered a secondary actor by many participants. And this point, the important thing is that all the attributes that ended being relevant were linked with social construction and broader, and broader narratives. All of them have meanings which shape in different degrees the activities performed in the public realm. So these are the four aspects. The first one is neglect and deterioration, is dynamic, is provoked by the community and the absence of the state is related with abandoned public spaces, rubbish and debris in the public spaces, lack of artificial light by deterioration. The second one is the limitation of territories, is dynamic, is provoked by outsiders, by uh, stranger people inside the neighborhoods who arrive for different reasons to, to the neighborhoods and is related with territorial markers, vandalism, destruction of the pro public property and the presence of public facilities. Then the third process is uh, the construction of borders and facades. It's also dynamic, it's provoked by individual interventions made in the houses but that are visible towards the outside. This is related with fences and barriers in the public spaces, the permeability of them, the sense of order in facades and the presence of commercial stores. And then the urban form, which is the result of the design uh, of each neighborhood uh, is related with building type, with connectivity with other neighborhoods and the urban grid. What happened with this four aspects that neglect and deterioration tend to, sh to be linked with emotions. People who stay or perform any activity in a highly deteriorated place normally start to feel bad. They normally don't suppress activities but it has this emotional component. The limitation of territories was related with precautions. Where can I go? And this is was related with assumptions that people make about highly demarcated places. For example, they uh, walking in a highly demarcated place, it doesn't mean that the place is risky by itself. People assume that it's risky and something can happen in this place because if you see territorial markets, it's because two groups at least are fighting for for the control of that place. And then the construction of border and facade is related with suppression. If the characteristics of the borders and facades don't fit in the narratives of what it saves and what it's good, people start to suppress and block some areas to perform any possible activities. Uh, and this was interesting because it was related with some of the aspects normally mentioned by Jane Jacobs or Jangel. And, but in a different sense, I mean, permeability of fences and facade, the presence of commercial stores is related with eyes on the street, eyes on the public space. This was something relevant for the participant, but more relevant for where, what they can get from them. For example, in a, a, the presence of permeable a, fences and facades means that people don't have to protect against stranger or people in the public space, they don't have the necessity to, it, to do it. The same with commercial stores, if a commercial store is open it's because crime is not enough to destroy that commercial store. For example, in this point, the most dangerous place is not the place 
it's not a an empty place it's a place with an abandoned store completely fortified full with fences and completely deteriorated and finally the urban form is related with the performance what can i do in the public space how easy is to find routes uh, it is related with building type in which uh, cultural biases towards apartments normally benefit houses uh, the neighborhoods made by houses are normally better evaluated than those composed by apartments. These forces, for example, this is one of the places in one of the state neighborhood. It's highly demarcated. It has shows hanging on the wires. It has graffiti on blind walls. It has painted blind walls and electric poles. It has a high level of deterioration. It has immobile groups controlling the public space and it has also impermeable, impermeable fences. This is one of the forbidden places for the people living in those areas. And this is another place in which uh, impermeable fences is also related with the sense of order, uh, the irregular property lines, self-construction which is visible from the outside and people tend to say like places like these are extremely dangerous because you don't know how to read them. You don't know how to understand a place like this because it's too confusing for them. So those attributes in general show a transference of the entitlements to occupy the public real from residents to other groups like drug trunks, consumers and traffickers. People normally mention that a highly demarcated place happen because the community in that place give up to the public space itself. They start to be inside the houses and they and therefore they transfer these rights to occupy the public space to traffickers and consumers. It's also related with a high sense of being controlled by micro trafficking and its consequences, a high sense of distrust toward the institution of those who are considered different. In this for example they said that a highly deteriorated place is not because of the state, it's not because of the absence of the state, it's because the community wasn't enough to protect a, a specific place. Uh, there is also a high sense of being alone and living surrounded by a stranger, a high sense of social isolation in which people know only their realities, a rampant, a rampant suppression of public activities, reducing them to those which solve just basic needs. For example, just take the bus during the morning or during the afternoon. And this is also related with a growing immobility in those who help others to perform their everyday lives, like children, for example. It was so extremely common to find people extremely fearful in these places. And they normally assist others to perform their everyday lives because they cannot do it by themselves. But what happens with these uh, places is that issues like those those normally are treated as part of regeneration program by considering this as a large group of social problems which can be solved by strengthening the local community. The social aspect often complements and makes sustainable over time the intervention made in the public in the physical environment. In this point the information gathered suggests suggest that the social and the physical aspects are strongly tied. Any intervention on the physical aspect must be accompanied by a lecture of the meanings related to it. The change of the built environment, the, narr the narratives behind must be transformed and replaced. What I found in this place, this is a scheme just to summarize the ideas. It, this is a, an abstract scheme. For example, this is the home of someone. This is a walkable distance, the place you can reach just going by foot. This is the presence of public facilities and public spaces around. And this is what happens. People, based on the level of deterioration, the features of the facades and visible, the visible facades and the uh, presence of territorial markets, they, they trace a line between the area which is available for them and the area which is not available for them. And this creates a highly familiar area in which they can perform any activity in the public space and there is also this excluded area by assumption based on the built environment. This available area is normally adjusted by time and entitlements. And this is extremely uh, uh, dangerous during the night, for example, when people f feel safe only inside the house. 
And this scheme traces two different ways to operate an environment like this one. To make this the excluded area available, there is a need to modify the social construction which defines that area as a dangerous area. And to occupy the public realm in the available area, there is a need to improve the urban design of the social constructions. So in this point, I would like to, just as a final remark, to point a three actions. Clear action which appear as relevant in the view of the inhabitants and yet to be explored by policymakers. First, this reinforce the social capital outside the local communities that can blur those frontiers. And in this point, for example, it's extremely relevant to create links between the different communities to start to blur this clear frontier and start to destroy the assumption based on the built environment. Then, by making visible other realities, modify the limited standards that have normalized precarious conditions. This can include for immobile individuals, for example, tra travel to other places of the city. And third, with the support of the institution, reclaim entitled by teaching fright to frighten it individuals how to occupy the public space. The idea in this one is to start to reclaim the public space for the people who live in the communities and take away that public space from drug traffickers and other actors who have take uh, the power on it. That is it. Thank you very much.